morning, Mike Torino. I'm back in the garage, and it's a couple days after my last episode. This is episode 21. Got a kind of a milestone here. Today, the last of the uh, supports inside the garage came down. We have uh, a lot more room to move around in here. I want to show you uh, what the roof looks like with the uh, scaffolding down and most of the forms off. I'll go ahead and turn the camera around and let you take a look. I'll pan around the inside of the garage a little. And now we're, we still have some of the forms up, but I think this is a good shot of the ceiling, steel deck. This steel deck is one millimeter thick, and it's the pan shape variety. On top of that, there's four inches of concrete which make up the pad for upstairs. This view here is looking out through the three garage doors, one, two, three, and we have a window and entryway, entry door, a window here. The guys that were free have started to render the inside walls. And they look really nice. This is a mortar mix, cement and sand mix that they plaster over the existing hollow block. And all of the beams and, and columns came out really nice uh, from vibrating the, the mixture in there to get it really nice and compacted. I initially wanted to leave the, the beams and the columns uh, as is. I didn't want to render them. And, but they started chipping. They do, they do, they do this chipping to um, help the mortar mix adhere to the concrete. But since they started chipping, I'm gonna have to go through with the mortar. But I kind of like the uh, rustic look of the unfinished beams. We might take that look to our new house when we, when we do the house. One thing I wanted to take a look at here is see how the concrete block is properly filled with our concrete mixture and that's probably something to make sure you check if you're doing your own build some of the contractors or workers may not pay particularly good attention into getting the concrete all the way down inside the voids but when we chip this area out for the panel boxes I noticed that, yes, yes indeed they did fill these voids completely so yeah. And if you watched episode 20, I already talked about the big mistake that was made as far as elevation. And you can see here, this is what, what I decided to do. We've knocked these partial walls here that were in front of each garage door and we're going to landscape it so it's much easier to drive in and out. Now that led to a secondary problem when we did that. We ended up lowering the floor overall in the garage and that comes with its own set of problems. We're going to have to lower our, some of our electrical boxes. As you can see, the, the new grade is going to be the threshold of this entry door. That's going to be the new grade for the top of the concrete floor. So I have to excavate an additional X amount of uh, soil from here to account for my compaction of the clay, compaction of four inches of gravel. And I initially wanted six inches of 
concrete, but I'm rethinking that. If I can get a hold of some concrete fiber, I may I may use fiber and rebar to strengthen the concrete and go with a four inch pour. But the, for example, if I was standing on this threshold, my light switch is, is way up here, and uh, I have to stretch my arm to reach it, so that's kind of comical, but it's easy to fix because we haven't finished this wall yet. We're just going to move this electrical box down. Last episode, you know, I mentioned that I was planning a six inch pour in here. But then more research, I'm thinking depending. I mean there's a lot of there's a lot of arguments online. Four inch pour, six inch four inch slab or a six inch slab. And I think the consensus is that that's just not enough information to know how strong a, a slab can be because there's a whole bunch of other variables. So what kind of reinforcement you're going to use, what kind of mixture you're going to use, and whether your slab is going to be supported by the footings or maybe a, uh, a, a subterranean tie beam. All those factors can influence the strength of the slab. I'm leaning toward now is maybe uh, maybe stick with a four inch slab use a reinforcing bar as well as fiberglass admixture. Poly polypropylene, polypropylene admixture, if I can find it. Uh, they sell it here by the, the kilo, but it's very expensive by the kilo, so I wanna, I wanna see if I could find some that's a little bit more affordable. And we might try that in here and see how it goes. If anybody's got any ideas, please comment. Tell me what I'm doing right. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. See you next time.